What's up everyone, GS2 Cents here and it is Vega launch day, again. Actually the Vega 56 just launched, I don't even know where mine is at. Do we know where mine is at? So, oh. don't know. There it is, right there. The Vega 56 Black has just launched and uh, we're gonna talk today about some water blocks for this because you know what, regardless of the pricing problems and regardless of the supply and demand, these things are still selling out everywhere. In fact, the 56, the second it went on sale, was gone. But there are some of you that are also still interested in putting some custom water blocks on that, so that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. Level up your gaming experience with the Corsair One Small Form Factor Gaming PC. Featuring water-cooled Intel 7th generation processors, M.2 NVMe SSD support, and liquid-cooled GTX 10 series GPUs. To learn more, just head to Corsair.com. So yeah, I could definitely use the Vega 56 here for demonstrational purposes, but I'm gonna go ahead and just use my Vega 64 special edition, or limited edition here, and we're gonna talk about two new water blocks here available from EK Water Blocks. These are pretty much identical. They work on both, the 56 and 64, and one's an acetal, which is the black and nickel, and then one is the clear. I think we're gonna go with the clear. The clear, or the nickel plexi, whatever, where is it at? There we go. The Nickel Plexi has one of the most elegant looks, in my opinion. You can see through it, uh, obviously, because it's clear. I think I already opened this one. Hey, what do you know? I didn't need my knife. But if it was actually time today, we will actually do some temperature testing with this because this sucker gets hot. I mean, you guys know the power draw on this is high. With a lot of power draw comes a lot of heat, and uh, yeah, it'll get all the way up to whatever temperature target you set. If you set 85, it'll go to 85. If you set 90, it'll go to 90. Yeah, so let's see if we can't tame some of those temperatures. But cool thing about this too is check this out. It actually comes with a single slot plate. So that's kind of nice to see. It's not very often you see this anymore. And because a lot of graphics cards now are doing away with the DVI connector, this is actually not, uh, something that can happen now. Um, 1080 Ti also got rid of the DVI connector as well as Titan X P, your Titan X Pascal, the official P. Yeah, and here is the block. It's a really nice looking block. You can see right here, because it's universal, it's not gonna say Radeon Vega 56 or 64, it's just gonna say Radeon. And you can also see there's been some redesigned uh, covers right here for what they're calling the, the little terminal. This is actually called a terminal. But this is just a, a cover that goes on top of that. So if you were to remove that, it would look exactly like the past. But check it out, look how small the block is. Most of this plate right here is just aesthetic. The block's really small because once again, you don't have a traditional memory layout. So you just have to cut, touch things like VRMs and then the actual, uh, again, the die and the memory are on the same you know, layout. So it's gonna be pretty easy to cool. That's also one of the reasons why it's hot. You have a lot of really focused heat. So with all of that said, why don't we just go ahead and do it?
Well, it wouldn't be a Jace Sense video if I didn't have some kind of a montage. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. But anyway, here it is right here, it's running. We've had the loop going now for a while, actually. We've been testing for about an hour or so, and we're topping at about 46C is the hottest that we've seen. That's pretty impressive given the amount of focused heat there is on the HBM module. Um, but what I wanna talk about here is overclocking for a second because Vega really seems to like water. Um, but you'll notice that the clocks still bounce all over the place. And I think that's just the nature of the beast, honestly. Um, and, and some of the noise that you're hearing right now, that's actually the power supply in my test bench. The fan is making that noise. It might be time to actually service that. The graphics card is not cheap. I mean, it's being marked up all over the world. Obviously, it's you know, it's coming at a premium. And then you add another 130 bucks on top of it for a, on top of that for a water block. You're going to be talking roughly 850 dollars ish to get this thing on water. Now, fortunately, it uses the stock back plate, so you don't have to worry about getting rid of that. But you know, it's one of those things you really just have to kind of look at it and say. Is it worth it to you? Now, prices normalize and come back down to around the $500 for the standalone card or $400 for the standalone uh, Vega 56, then it's probably worth it. I mean, with these clocks now on water, we're definitely seeing 1080 speeds, but it's a hell of a lot more power draw. And as we're overclocking it, power draw is even greater. Now you'll see that it gets up close to 1700, which is not bad. In fact, we were seeing a pretty decent improvement. Uh, when I was doing my testing here, I actually saw a five FPS improvement on Metro Last Light in 1440p versus the standard turbo clock when it was on air. And then I saw almost 500 points higher on my uh, Fire Strike Ultra, which is a 4K benchmark. And we uh, got a total score of 57.75 versus the original score, which I'll post right here. But that's a heck of an improvement by simply putting it on water. Unfortunately, it's not a big enough improvement for it to really take any sort of a massive lead over the GTX 1080, and it's definitely not reaching the 1080 Ti. And once you put a block on it, you are definitely at 1080 Ti prices. So that's something worth keeping in mind. Now you can see right here, it's sitting at 46C, 48C. I mean, again, we've been running for a while. The air conditioner is off. So the rising temperatures you're seeing is because the whole room is a, as a whole is getting hotter. It's summer in California. It's supposed to be, what, 109 degrees today? 110 degrees Fahrenheit? You know what that is in Celsius? It's a shit ton. That's a shit ton of cel Celsius is this. It's up to you to determine whether or not this is worth it to you. I mean, I, I put out a poll on Twitter asking if you guys wanted to see this video and uh, you guys definitely wanted to see that. Oh, and you guys might've heard that squeak for a second there. One thing, that, and this isn't just Vega. This is, this is any graphics card, honestly. Once you put a solid piece of metal against the die, uh, things like coil wine are louder because it's resonating across a bigger surface area where typically heat sinks with fins can kind of mask that sound and absorb it. Yeah, water blocks tend to make it even louder. So anyway guys, tell me what you guys thought uh, in the comments section down below. Do you think it's worth it right now to water cool Vega or do you think it's worth waiting for prices to normalize? My personal opinion, wait for it to normalize before you go putting it on water. I mean, there's improvement to be had, not $130 worth right now on top of a premium product in terms of pricing and availability. Now that may change as time goes on, but you know, only you as the buyer can determine what's worth it to you. Anyway, time to go guys, as always. Uh, I did launch my t-shirt store. You got this amazing looking maroon one on me right now on this, on this sexy, fluffy body. If you guys want your very own, look in the link down below. You guys can uh, help out the channel by actually getting something back for your money, merch, rather than this crappy content. But with that said guys, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.